The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the opening bell and quite a market as we continue to the downside in pretty dramatic fashion. We're going to kick things off with a weekly of the S&P, folks. I've been talking about this trend line for a while now. And that is quite a decisive break. We uh, that is quite a decisive breakout on a weekly basis on the S and P. You can't ignore the acceleration we got this week, folks. You're talking about a high of this bar, 46.71. We're 230 points below that price level right now. Back on a 15-minute basis, quite the acceleration yesterday. You almost can't overstate the move we had. You're talking about an intraday high yesterday of 45.94, less than 24 hours ago, folks. You were trading 150 points higher than you're trading at right now. We're still off the lows that we got at about 10 p.m. Eastern time last night at about 44.30. We're trading at 44.44. You're down two-thirds percent in the S&P. NASDAQ 100 down more than a full percent. You're trading 14,684. The Dow's off about four-tenths right now. The Russell off about 14 points. Bitcoin going to get a lot of headlines coming into Friday, coming into the weekend. Bitcoin yesterday sitting pretty comfortably above 43,000 this morning not so much the case you're down $4400 bitcoin really accelerates with the with the market market makes a high at about 11 a.m. eastern time yesterday things really fell out for bitcoin towards the end of the day but man you had quite an acceleration overnight as well you ended the trading day yesterday in bitcoin about 41,400 and you see the acceleration there on a 15 minute basis. Now, no huge fundamental news other than, you know, China putting the clamp, uh, excuse me, Russia putting the clamp down on cryptos, calling it a threat. Uh, and I would say anybody, especially, you know, I was talking to my dad out there this morning, any government, ourselves included, Western democracies included, but especially a country run by somebody like Putin, the last thing he wants is to lose control of the money supply and have his citizens able to act and do things without it. But that same thing goes for Western democracies, uh, Europe, et cetera, our Fed. Uh, keep your eye on that one because we have just crossed a critical level. It's the second time we have. You put Bitcoin on a daily. And I had mentioned, I mean, when we broke below this 40,000 mark, you're going back to January 10th. So you're talking about 11 days ago. Seemed like Bitcoin had saved itself, bounced off that $40,000 area. Just like that, though, pretty decisive break when you look at it really decisive since no November 10th. You're talking about just over two months, folks, 70,000 to 38,000. And next stop seems all but assured to be 30,000 on this. Now that we've broken a couple times below this, we have the markets escalating to the downside right now. You got Bitcoin at 38,000. And you can see there's nothing in between about 40,000 and 30,000. And that was the run it had from July to basically August in one month span. Now you back it up a little bit further on a three year weekly, that's where it looks a little bit clearer, 30,000, the price point. That's where we came into the year 2020. We'd give it all back from 2020. And man, you break below 30,000, 10,000 in play, like instantly too. Because this run it had on a weekly basis, folks, you went from 10,000 on October 12th to ending the year at 30,000. In less than a quarter, you rose from 10,000 to 30,000, kept going to 60,000. We're on our way to 30,000. And if we cross 30,000, you don't have to be a master technician, folks, to see where Bitcoin goes. And it's 10,000. Let's jump over to Ethereum as well. Ethereum, not going back as far, but quite a decisive break as well. Now, you are right back to where you were on September 20th on Bitcoin, trading at 2700 You break below this level, and you're talking about 1700 1800 the pullback we got in the middle of June and July on Ethereum. All right, we jump to crude. Crude, holding up relatively well with everything else going on in this market. Crude, right uh, up against these highs we had back in October. Now, this is a three-year weekly. To see the action we have, you can see crude settling at a new normal. You put crude going back a five-year weekly, above where we were at even in 2018, and you check it out on a monthly basis. 
pretty similar action in terms of Bitcoin. You have really easy to spot price action on these charts, folks. You're breaking through areas right now on crude. Uh, next stop is $100. We haven't done anything. Look at the fall off we had back to 2014. Everybody's talking about $100 oil. Oil can't even trade lower with the market just dropping out of bed in a big way. And uh, nonetheless, we got crude sitting at 85 bucks. Next stop seems to be 100 on that. Uh, in similar fashion to Ethereum, anytime you break a very critical area, folks, and beyond that critical area, you just have a one-way trip to a certain price, as in, you know, right when we broke above, basically, that, that high that we got back in 2018, when we break above 76.90, there is nothing in the way between 76.90 and 100 bucks, and it did that in the span of about four months, going back to 2014. 2014, remarkable. You're going back 2014. All right, back to a daily on the charts. We check out gold. Gold behaving relatively well as well. 1842, gold struggling for a bit. Maybe uh, with the market in tor turmoil, gold uh, shows a little bit of appreciation finally in the face of some inflation that's pretty shocking. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds, catching a little bit of a bounce there. Oops, excuse me. In the note and bond, we got the 10 year right now, a little bit indeed, right? Quite a bounce in sh for sure. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I mean, you got markets selling off you have yields actually decreasing now as the floodgates go to the safety of bonds now if that happens it's going to send rates back down which is pretty interesting and it is quite a rise from where we were wednesday folks you're talking about a full point and eight ticks in the 10-year right now trading at 128.11 all right and let's get to quite the main course last night after the bell um Maybe this is the freakout that's going on with the NASDAQ right now, and it might be because Netflix is not stopping, folks. We're trading at 400 bucks. You were trading at 520 yesterday. That's $120 per share that Netflix shareholders are going to lose just from where it was at about 1 p.m. Eastern time yesterday. They missed on subscriber numbers. And that's all that matters to this company. I mean, I'm a big Disney bull. Disney underperformed the market, and they are trading lower. We'll get to them shortly as well. Uh, last year, they underperformed. They're trading low with Netflix this morning. But Disney's has a lot more going on. So when they come out with their numbers, the market is heavily interested in what they're doing for streaming. But they're also heavily interested in their parks that have struggled. They're interested in the movie theaters that they are releasing their films in that aren't open yet. Netflix does one thing. They sign up people for streaming, and that's it, period. They pay for production. They pay for content. They sign people up for their service, and that's it. So it's really simple. Even though they made the numbers last night in terms of revenue, in terms of uh, consensus estimates for revenue, um, earnings, that type of stuff, Subscribers are all that matter to this company. And as I speak, $3.99, I did not see this one coming. And I want to say if you're looking to get in Netflix, right, this might be at least an opportunity because you're going to open, folks, at 400 bucks to put this on a chart. Okay, we got to go back even further, but check this out. We are at pre-pandemic prices. They give it all back. Netflix gives it all back from the pandemic. Remarkable. Peloton we're going to get to coming up as well. I mean... Just uh, experiences a lot, folks, living through this, seeing this, seeing these companies that should have benefited oh so greatly, and they did for a short time being. They are not meandering the end of this pandemic like we all kind of suspected as Netflix surged to $700. You're going to open at $398. we are going to take a look a little bit at Netflix. We're going to go back a little bit further. We're going to talk Disney. We're going to talk Peloton. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got a chart of Netflix up here. Netflix trading right now at three ninety nine is the ask right now, under four hundred dollars on this chart. So I had the three year weekly up when we went to break, backing that up a little bit further. There's your five year weekly now. Interesting, right? That we're opening. We're talking about important price levels on charts, folks. Four hundred is a very important price level for Netflix. We trade below four hundred just visually. You can see that number one, you got the next round number at three hundred. And 300 was an area that, yeah, we traded all the way down to, what was it, 231 at the end of 2018. We got to a price point of 252 at September of 2019. So, yes, we are going to be back to $400, which was where we were trading at pre-pandemic levels. But it is important to remember that Netflix really accelerated. I mean, you're talking about a stock that was trading at 137 as recently as 2017, right? So that is still a three-bagger, okay? from that price point from where you are right now just for some context but critical area for netflix at 400 getting into the actual raw numbers uh they missed in a big way and they really don't have a reason why which is probably partly to blame in terms of why the stock's being punished so much uh 2.5 million subscribers is what they expect this quarter that'd be the company's worst start in more than a decade plunges is how they put it uh Erasing, yeah, 45 billion in market cap. So they added 18.2 million customers in 2021. That's down 50% from the record year before. Now, checking out the ads they've had on a yearly basis, okay? 2020, record year, pandemic, they capitalized. They add 36.6 million subscribers. Last year, they add 18.2. You add them both together, you're talking about what is that? 54.8 million subscribers. That's 27 million subscribers per year over the two years. They definitely pulled forward some of the subscribers. We know that now when you look at this chart. You can't deny it when you look at the yearly fall off to the tune of about 50% of what they did in 2020. But when you take the average, folks, at 27, it's exactly what they did in 2019. Now, 2018 was at 28, but pretty much on par. 2018, 19, 20, and 2021, they're pushing about 27 to 28 million subscribers per year ad. Uh, market, though, was looking for, yeah, 6.26 is what they were looking for for the current quarter. That's the one that they're talking about. 2.5 million subscribers now. Now, here's the part that gets a little interesting, though. If you're a bull on Netflix, 
could cause a little worry. Company executives struggled to identify why growth has slowed. They blamed a tough economy, especially in Latin America, as well as lingering fallout from the pandemic. They acknowledged the potential impact from rival streaming services. That's something new. Uh, yeah, and as I say, Reed Hastings has long dismissed competition as a problem, noting Netflix, Netflix has grown as many rivals came into the business. That's very true as well, and this is something we're going to start to see play out because my friends and I were even talking about yesterday, uh, you know, Disney catering to people with children, especially. How does that play out when you talk about canceling? Uh, many children, though, they're hooked on Netflix just as fast, folks. If you have little kids in your house, maybe you're familiar with Coco Melon on Netflix. That thing is like uh, caught fire in a big way. So can you cancel either of them? Can you cancel both? I have both in my household. Many people both have probably have both in their household. But we're nearing a point. They were talking about the Tigers Den yesterday, man. You add up your cable bill. You add up Netflix. You add up Disney. Uh, maybe you got the Disney plan with Hulu and ESPN+. Plus. Maybe you have HBO Max in there as well. You, you're paying probably more than you might have been paying for cable at the beginning of things. So we'll see how this plays out. You have Disney trading lower today. You have Roku trading lower today as well. I think they put in here. But yeah, so this is the quote, okay? It's tough to pinpoint why subscriber acquisition hasn't recovered to pre-COVID levels. That's the CFO said on their webcast yesterday. He and his colleagues reiterated their confidence in long-term prospects for the business. Well, what else are they going to say? That, that, that we're in deep trouble and we're never going to turn it around and the long-term prognosis is negative? You're not going to hear a, a C-suite executive say that ever, folks. Um, and yeah, they just go over some of the numbers that they posted in terms of what they were looking for. Nonetheless, that is Netflix. They trade lower, and this will be an interesting open, folks, at about 400 bucks for Netflix shares. Now, we got to jump over to Peloton. Peloton, I mean, Netflix. Netflix changed the world, folks. They, they're they going to be around, okay? They're going to be around at a different valuation today than they were yesterday or a few years ago. Uh, Peloton, you can't say the same thing. Peloton has not changed the world, folks. They became quite a phenomenon. That is undeniable. The chart says it as well. They've become a phenomenon to the upside and to the downside. Yesterday, folks, I'm getting meme jokes left and right from my friends about Peloton. Peloton has become a meme joke stock after becoming a cult following stock. Now, they've built quite the following over the period of the pandemic. That following is probably going to follow them through. But I wouldn't even buy a $2,000 bike during the pandemic. I'm certainly not going to buy it now. I heard my dad talking about it yesterday in the same sentiment. Uh, they obviously have some problems. They halt production yesterday. Uh, they're trading at $24. You were trading at $37 in 2019. Uh, what it must be like to be down 40% in Peloton over the period of about two plus years when you had COVID strike during that time. Obviously a period of mismanagement. They ramped things up. The forecasts were horrible. You combine this, you combine Netflix, folks, some of these expectations that we have, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and Netflix is a different deal than Peloton. Peloton is complete mismanagement by the executives. You can't deny it. And then the whole story comes out that you got the executives selling 500 million at the tops. Here's what I'll say about that portion of it, okay? Insider transactions are very important. I think it came out that the CEO sold about $110 million of his position. That was only about 10% of his portfolio, all right? I can't blame an executive that sells out 10%, folks, when you trade from 17 to 170. As traders ourselves, if you get a 10-bagger during that time, the expectations built into the future are just mammoth. So he was a billionaire at those prices. Uh, I think he's now worth like $300 million or something like that, and he cashed out $100 million at the top. Keep your eye on those positions. A bunch of executives did it. I, I can't blame them, though. I really not. People are up in arms over this deal, folks. Executives, folks, uh, uh, an executive that starts a company like Peloton, brings it public, um, you know, creates a, a phenomenon during the pandemic. He's a billionaire. And he says to himself, you know, there's a lot of growth built into the price of this equity at 100 bucks, 120, 140, 170. I think I'm going to take 10 percent off the table and diversify it because why would I keep one billion dollars in a company that's trading at 171 that was just trading at 17. Now, 
Mark Zuckerberg would disagree. And that's be how you become king of the internet, is you keep all the shares, you keep all the ownership if you, if ownership if you really believe in what you're doing. Um, but he could have believed in it as well and just didn't want to ride it out at the tops like you see there at 171, which is pretty crazy over the top in terms of where you are on that equity when you were just at 17. Did not think that we would get below pre-COVID levels, though, uh, on Peloton. Now, Netflix, the reason why Netflix should freak out the market a little bit is what happens if technology stocks are missing in a big way and what happens if we got a tough earnings sector coming up um, tough earnings quarter coming up for some of these equities netflix did not imagine that you could trade to 400 bucks on their earnings last night uh, about a $35 move priced into this equity coming into things so much much larger move uh, if you were buying it at the money put or call yesterday about $18 is all you were paying. Well, you're going to get a $108 move to the downside on that equity on the open. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back for the opening bell. We'll take a look a little bit at Peloton. We get back. We'll take a look at Disney. We'll take a look at some of those tech stocks as well. NASDAQ off 113. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get markets open. We get the S&P right now, negative by 18 points, trading at 44.56. NASDAQ 100 off 127. Let's jump to Netflix, see how they're opening up on the open bell. 
a little bit lower price. We make a low of 397 for Netflix shares on the open. We'll jump to some of the other stocks impacted. You got Disney down about 4% on the Netflix news, down to 141.90. We jump over to Roku shares. Roku shares down about 3%, catching a little bit of a pop on the open from where we were at 161.94. Let's see how Peloton is trading right now. There's a lift for you. Peloton trading up 8% to 26.22, still well off the $32 it was trading at yesterday when the news broke that they are halting production of some of their bikes. Uh, I think you had the CEO out there doing a little bit of damage control out there as well. Like I said, I mean, they got a big following. They got a lot of people with bikes now that they're gonna have for recurring revenue. But man, talk about a reevaluation of the growth multiples on that company. We're trading at $26 right now on Peloton. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading. Apple shares getting a little bit of a lift on the open. Check that out. So we get the NASDAQ 100 down 77 right now, getting a lift. Part of that's got to be Apple trading from basically 163 to 165 right on the open. Let's see how Microsoft is trading this morning. Basically flat at 302. We jump to Google shares. Google trading flat as well. Amazon shares trading at 3,009. Amazon actually with a 2,900 print. Remarkable. You take a look at Amazon. Uh... If you're looking to get in Amazon, folks, you get a 2,900 handle on Amazon, you could at least start to dabble. The only thing a little bit worrisome is, man, this acceleration you got. I would be very surprised if Amazon gave it all back during the pandemic, but wouldn't be the first time, folks, because, man, been surprised many times by some of these equities. But we're approaching an area that has nice support here out of about $3,000. That's an area we've been chopping around in since July of 2020, folks. You're getting into Amazon at July of 2020 prices of about 3000 back from 3700 a couple times last year. So you're talking about, what is that, more than a 20% haircut of where you were trading at on two occasions last year on Amazon shares. And these markets were surging higher. As you got the S&Ps down just 14 points now, 14,000, uh, excuse me, 4,461. But man, these moves on a weekly basis, pretty decisive. There's your S&P on a weekly basis. There's your NASDAQ on a weekly basis. Uh, these two bars we got, folks, from January 3rd and the week we had this week, of course, January 17th. You're talking about giving up in the NASDAQ 100 almost 2,000 points, folks. We're about 200 points away from a 2,000-point give up from the highs we had to start this year. That's a move you better be paying attention to. Let's jump over the VIX as we're getting a little bit of a lift right now in the markets. VIX pairing those gains a bit, but man, you're talking about 26.75, and that is, as I just had it, you put this thing, I'm going to back it up a little bit further, just to show you the type of moves that are possible here. Uh, this VIX move up to 26.70, pretty well below most of the spikes that we've had in the last couple of years. You look at it. I mean, most of these spikes, folks, this is going back to uh, March of 2020. I'll back it up even a little bit further to get the full COVID spike in there, okay? Uh, but you had 85 when the market just fell out of bed when COVID hit. Outside of that, we look at the runs that we've had since June of that year. And as you can see, most of the high is actually higher, which means that the pain may not be over, man. We are getting a lift, but it's almost a scary lift. Every time we've risen in this market, you've had to pay the price later in the day with some negative action. We'll see if that happens today. We check in on Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Catching a little bit of a lift. We're now 1100 bucks off the low. We'll keep our eye on Bitcoin shares. Uh, shares Bitcoin trading at 38760 right now. All right, let's jump down the line and see what else we have going on in terms of stocks. Slumberjay, the oil services company. Oil, good market to be in oil right now. Uh, beat top and bottom line estimates for the fourth quarter. 41 cents a share, two cents above estimates. Higher oil prices spurred demand for drilling services. Slumberjay, SLB is their symbol. And they are barely negative after some volatility on the open by about half a percent. We got this market turning positive. Russell and the Dow just went positive. S&P only three points in the negative right now. Yeah, Netflix we covered. Peloton we've covered. Uh, CSX, they're out with their numbers. They beat by a penny, 42 cents a share. Railroad operators revenue also beat. Sales grew across all of its business lines as customers sought to deal with supply chain challenges. However, a little bit negative as uh, they noted a surge in expenses, the common theme. There's CXX, CSX down about 3.2% right now. Uh, Intel, yeah, here's an Intel one I want to get to. They're going to spend $20 billion in Ohio chip making hub. CEO explains plans in an interview with Time Magazine. Intel's trying to catch up to Asia giants in chip making. $20 billion is quite a price tag to go after it. The company expects to grow to be the world's biggest silicon manufacturing site, according to a person familiar 
with its plants. I mean, $20 billion is a lot of money, but I think Taiwan Semiconductor came out and said they're going to spend $100 billion over the next three years or five years or something like that. So the amount of money these chip makers have to spend just to be competitive is pretty remarkable. Uh, they're going to begin construction of two fabrication plants on a 1,000 acre site in New Albany, operational by 2025. So you're talking about three years. Time uh, reported the plans earlier, citing an interview with the CEO. He said uh, the company will use the location as a hub to research, develop it, develop and manufacture its most advanced chips and will have the option to expand to 2,000 acres and up to eight fabrication plants. Intel shares this morning. They are getting a little bit of a lift. They're up 1%. The market likes that. Now, here's what I'll say about Netflix as well. They're trained at 399, right where they were, down 21%. The thing to watch out for on Netflix, because I'm thinking about it myself, I mean, you got to imagine, if you were looking to get into Netflix, and I was, just even maybe long-term retirement-wise, right, gets away from you to 701. They had this consolidation area from July of 2020 to basically for a full year till August of 2021. You break out of that, you're back to $400. As I put it, you're in a pretty nice area in terms of $400 being an area that you had a little bit of resistance back to even 2018. Maybe that's gonna be an area of support that you've had a couple occasions for the better part of 2019. We saw prices of 386 almost on a couple occasions, but here's the thing that I'll say that's kind of out there looming. Netflix is struggling. The market's making them pay for that. Reed Hastings is an innovator, folks. That you cannot deny the way he changed the world. If you recall, when Netflix was first starting, and they had their CD service, really remarkable that they built their company on CDs, which our children won't even know existed. Um, it was so long ago. But when they first transitioned to streaming platforms, if you recall, first streaming was included, and then they segmented it out, right? And you had to either sign up for a CD service or the streaming service. Reed Hastings knew streaming was the future. There are going to be speed bumps. They needed to ditch the CD deal. They needed to start signing people up for streaming. They needed to start producing programs and spending money for streaming. If they decide to get into gaming, and this might be a catalyst, because I imagine they're sitting at their desk this morning, folks, going, okay, how do we turn this around, right? We're not growing the way we need to. Where do we find some growth? It's going to be international for sure. But you heard the executive saying we're not quite sure. So if they're not quite sure why they can't sign up as many international subscribers to their streaming service as they thought, maybe one area is gaming. They've talked about getting into gaming. Well, maybe they really have some aspirations and they go out there and then they make a purchase into gaming. It might be a little bit of a turnaround time, but it's something to think about, folks. And so be aware that if you're getting in there, that is a possibility that you could see Netflix going out trying to really bolster their gaming. Maybe that's an area that they could provide uh, more value to their subscribers. And maybe that's an area they could provide more growth because they need it after yesterday. And they're going to be thinking about that. And that's one area they've talked about they want to get into. Something to keep in mind. Netflix trading at 398 down 21%. We'll be right back. Are you back, in folks. the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed form decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. 8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. David
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So much for the market bounce. We're back to negative action. We get the NASDAQ 100 back down 130 points. NASDAQ, uh, S&P, excuse me, down 23. All the markets back in the red right now. Bitcoin, 38,000. We get Disney down 5.5% negative with the market, but accelerating lower on the Netflix news. Now, here's what I'll give you on Disney. Disney, you back it up to the COVID lows of $79. You rise to 203 March of last year, 2021. Uh, we are now back to about a 50% run of that at 139.40. The 618 is sitting at about 126.42. Now, I'm going to back it up a little bit further so you can see the five, uh, the five years preceding uh, 120, an area that we might have a little bit of support. Maybe that's your next stop because we don't have much going on between about 120 and 140. Now you're at the 50%. You're kind of right back to the area that you traded at on the first news of Disney Plus. To give you some fundamental background of Disney, I mean, we're approaching areas, folks, before we even had any idea of what Disney existed like. Uh, one friend made a point that I found that I agreed with is that uh, Disney, if Disney service now they have kids in the house if disney service was 19 or 20 dollars a month they probably cancel but it's not folks it's like seven or eight bucks a month i think disney made a brilliant plan you know as you know i'm a disney bull but we're going back to an area folks that april of 2019 is when disney even announced any type of plan for disney plus prior to that you knew they they had talked about that they were going to create a streaming service, but the market had no idea. Were they going to make it $17? Were they going to go HBO Max style and make it $20 a month premium? Uh, no, they undercut Netflix in pricing. The market loved the idea. They traded Disney from about $150 up to $142 over the period of a few weeks. I'm just getting my bearings on how things went. Let me back this up again. Yes, so April of 2019, they announced those plans. Uh, they ended up being fortunate that they go public right before the pandemic. You push to 153 on the news that they had signed up X amount of people even before it began. Point being, folks, we are back to price levels that they didn't even know what the structure was going to be like on Disney, let alone the amount of people they've signed up. If you're looking a little bit longer term, boy, I encourage you to take a look at it at 138 because I imagine that 120, it's going to have some real support, even if it makes it down there. So maybe you start a partial position, um, yeah, they're saying that they need a uh, adult segment for the parents and they do have adult. They got natural national geographic in there. Um, they have some other things that are included, but I agree. And they are not competing like Netflix, man. Um, kids themselves, right? You, you can fly around a million things on Netflix. The one thing that Disney had does have that they're never, never going to lose is the star Wars. 
uh, franchises. They got the Marvel franchises, right? They got Mickey Mouse. They got Donald Duck. They have everything that goes with that. Um, that's a tough one for Netflix to compete with, but Disney's not getting it done in terms of the stickability. If you don't have kids, you're probably not sticking with Disney. So it's interesting to see. But this underperformance, this has a lot to do also with the parks and the movie theater business. Okay, because you back things up to 2019. And Disney had, I believe, eight to ten different movies that all grossed a billion dollars at the box office. They didn't have a single movie in 2020, and they ended 2021 with Spider-Man, which was the first movie since going back to the end of 2019. They'll be back to that business eventually, folks. So we'll see how it goes. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Let's jump to some of the fan favorite stocks out there. Tesla shares down about 1.7%. You're below $1,000. NVIDIA's had quite a pullback recently. NVIDIA, 237, man. Check out this stock from 346. Wow, quite a pullback. You've now given back $110 on NVIDIA shares. We jump over to Zoom shares. The slide does not stop. Down to 154. You're down another percent on Zoom shares. We'll check out Netflix, see how they're trading. The slide does not stop on Netflix, man. 391 we just hit on Netflix shares. My goodness. You jump over to Roku, down 3.5%. Peloton shares getting a little bit of a lift, but uh, that's a dead cat bounce in a big way over there in terms of up 6%, but well off the $32 it was trading at yesterday. And this market, talk about some two-way action. I'm going to put the NASDAQ 100 on a one-minute chart just for some quick action here. You just traded up 140 points, folks. Gave it all back within the first 15 minutes of trading. And we just bounced 80 NASDAQ points in the last three minutes. This market is trying to figure out which way it wants to go, and it just hasn't figured it out just yet. We jump over to the bonds. I mean, talk about a give back in yields, man. There is just action everywhere in this market, folks. That's a one minute basis. So we just came up and made highs at about 9, 12 at the beginning of the program. We're talking about a 10 year yield that is now at 1.76%. We're approaching 1.9% on Wednesday. 1.76%, quite an exodus of equities, people flocking to the safety of notes and bonds in a big way. Excuse me, over in Europe, shoot big negative action on the heels of our negative action yesterday. Excuse me, DAX was down 2.3%, FTSE down 1.4%, Calcarol down 1.7%, big numbers. Let's jump around and see how some of those meme stocks are trading. You get AMC down 2%. These stocks talk about a rise and a fall, man. 17 bucks. You're going right back to 10 bucks, folks, on AMC. GameStop. 100. It's just remarkable. These these poor people that got caught in some of these equities, hopefully not too many retail traders, but unfortunately, it's just been quite a ride to higher prices and lower prices indeed. All right. What else do I have pulled up here to chat about? We talked about Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, Mr. Diamond gets a raise. Not too surprising there as he has led that bank. Remarkable, 2005, he has been CEO. Um, and just like the analysts and associates at JP Morgan, he is getting a raise uh, of 10% to 34.5 million for his work in 2021. We jump over to some of the banks today with yields pulling back a bit. Talk about a give back, man. JP Morgan down again, you're at 147. You were just trading at 170. I mean, you just gave up $23 of price action in JP Morgan as they miss in a big way. Bank of America shares, you're down again. You were at 50, you gave up five bucks. So they're about 10% off where they were trading at. Wells Fargo has been the strongest one, but they gave up a little bit as well from 58 to 54. City really uh, pulling back as well. Let's jump around to some of the travel stocks and see how they're trading right now. This market's ridiculous. Uh, upwards and downwards we go. NASDAQ 100 down 130 again. There's your chart of American. Back down to the lows that we had in December on two occasions. Let's take out the three-year weekly. These airlines, man, just a max paying situation. So interesting, American. You're right back at that 618. You topped out on two occasions of American at 26. You're back to 16, a 618 of the move, and you're back to this area that we had a little bit of support back in uh, early December. Maybe that's an area for American. Quite a pullback this week. Delta shares also back to an area that we found a little bit of support in on a couple occasions for Delta. We jumped to domestically, JetBlue. Yeah, just uh, remarkable all over the place. The, the 
slow clawback in these travel stocks. We jumped to Carnival, the cruise ships, probably nowhere slower. Uh, Carnival down 2.5% again. Norwegian down 2.9%. Boeing shares down 2.7%. So much for being out of the woods for Boeing. Boeing shares this week alone from 230 to 208 for Boeing shares. All right, folks, stay tuned. It's Friday. We're only 20 minutes into the trading day. We got the S&P negative 21 points, NASDAQ 100, negative 130 now. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Markets continuing to escalate to the downside quite a week, and it's not over yet. We got the S&Ps down 30 points right now. That's a solid. What are we talking about here? Seven tenths percent, 44.44. NASDAQ 100 down 1.24 percent. I mean, look at this give back, folks. We're 600 points away, away from where we were trading at. No, we'll, we'll be exact here. We're 750 points where, of, where we were trading at February of last year. Well, 750 points, folks, for some context, we're a thousand points lower this week. We are almost going to give back the entire from February, a year's gains in the market just that quick. Now, you want to talk about some pullbacks, man. Kathy Wood, talk about falling out of favor. She's about to give it all back from COVID. You're trading at $74. You're down 2.4% for her fund. Some of those tech stocks, man, they're just getting pummeled. $60 is where ARC 
uh, Innovation ETF started the pandemic. You're trading at 74 after being at 160 early last year. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got live programming today. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's live coming up next, folks. I encourage you. Basil does an outstanding program on his newsletter, The Opening Call. You can check that out right under the newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, I'm talking about it specifically because Basil, sometimes, I don't know if he's going to do it tomorrow maybe he's out there listening but he puts out videos for subscribers on saturdays folks they're outstanding videos i watched them myself at some point on saturday over the weekend to get a feel uh just in as, in, as an example if you sign up for the opening call basil service okay last weekend this is what he put out you can go check that out before you even wait for this weekend all right and he's in there talking about it 51 minute video folks basil put off for subscribers last saturday uh for the overview of january 15th let alone when you sign up for the opening call he's got a bunch of great archive webinars in there as well so check that out check out any of the services folks you can check out multiple if you want check out my newsletter rocket equities and options you got our man dave white out there with path of least resistance uh 30 day money back guarantee for all of them folks uh but i talk about Basil, because man, he does an awesome job in those those webinar videos. They're basically a full webinar, folks, that he puts out on Saturdays. 51 minutes last weekend. You can check that out, as well as, of course, gaining access to the daily updates as well. All right, folks, we got quite a market. Uh, so much for a two-way market. We got negative action, and it's picking up to the downside. S&Ps making session lows right now at 44.38. Stay tuned for our man Basil. He's coming up next. Have a great weekend, everybody.